Welcome to five animals that look like monsters. Anglerfish. The natural world is home to more than 300 species of anglerfish, each uglier than the last, but we're mainly interested in some of the 160 species that lurk in the inhospitable depths of the world's ocean source. BBC. Between their upturned, gaping maws, needle-like teeth and distensible bellies, which stretch to digest prey twice their size, you wonder how they manage to feed it all. The answer lies in clever camouflage and a sinister trick of physiology. An evolved spine that juts out like a lantern and acts as phosphorescent bait, luring other fish to their doom. Scorpion fly. You are our next monstrous critter would look right at home among the mix and match features of mythical monsters like the cockatrice, the griffin and the hippogriff. Its long reddish body, yellow and black camo patterned wings, and mantis-like head would make it stand out in any crowd of insects, but it's the scorpion-like tail that makes you want to keep your distance from this omnivore.but before you reach for your black light, anti-venom, and critter stomp in shoes, you should know that scorpion flies, like the species Panorpanoptilus that lives in the fields and meadows of the south central US, the measure a mere 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters, long source. Cause. Also, these members of the order Mechoptera, from the Greek for long wings, confine their diets to plant materials like pollen, nectar and the occasional deceased or debilitated insect. Tongue eating louse we know what you're thinking. No one is allowed to bite your tongue but you. Well, fear not. You're probably safe, unless you happen to be a rose snapper. If so, we recommend steering clear of the Somatoa exigua isopod. These little crustaceans, which suck the blood from the gouged tongues of fish, after entering through their gills, will go one step further with you. They will actually replace your tongue and live off your blood supply, all while making little sea exigua babies in your mouth. Isopods are a widely varied group of crustaceans, most of which live in the sea, and many of which could easily have made the look like a monster parade source. King. But these buggers compare unfavorably to the love child of an albino wood louse and that mind-control bug that crawled out of Chekhov's ear in Star Trek II. The Wrath of Khan. Besides, this lingual licking louse is the only known animal parasite that functionally supplants a host's organ. <laughs> Assassin bugs and critters are born with looks that horrify, others have to accessorize. Take Acanthospis petax, one of the 7,000 known assassin bugs, which takes trophy collecting to a whole new level by decorating its spiny body with the corpses of its prey. Piles of them. Do they do this to strike terror into the hearts of their enemies? Actually, quite the opposite. They use the masking scent of the bodies to hide them from detection, and, in some cases, as with termites, which clean their nests of their dead, and so respond to the scent of termite corpses to actually lure additional prey to their doom beneath their horrific haberdashery, these accessorizing assassins come with their own monstrous qualities as well, including a cactus-esque assemblage of bodily spines and a long, hardened mouth bird called a rostrum. The latter is used to pierce the exoskeleton of its meal so that the bug can inject a paralytic and a toxin that turns the insect's innards into a slurpable smoothie. Or fish worms, dragons, sea serpents. From mythically symbolizing primordial chaos to supplying fodder for centuries of tall tales on the high seas, these creatures have occupied our collective imaginations for as long as anyone can remember. But could they exist, or, at least, be based on something that does over the years, we've advanced several candidates to explain alleged sightings of these legendary creatures, from porpoises swimming in single file to masses of seaweed, giant squids or even enormous nemertine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Scribe.